Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's Grade 6, Unit 2, Lesson 8, Practice Problems Review is on how much for one. In Question 1, in 2016, the cost of two ounces of pure gold was $2,640. Complete the double number line to show the cost for one, three, and four ounces of gold. Well, if I'm going from two ounces down to one ounce, I'm dividing by two. Well, if that's the case, then, from $2,640, I can divide by 2 here to get $1,320 for 1 ounce of gold. And once I know that, 1,320 ounces for 1 ounce of gold, I can use multiplication to help me solve the rest of these. For example, I can take 1,320 and multiply it by 3 to get 3,960 for the 3 ounces of gold. And likewise, I can take 1,320 and multiply it by 4 to get 5,280 feet in a mile and cost for 4 ounces of gold. Question 2. The double number line shows that four pounds of tomato cost $14. Draw tick marks and write labels to show the prices of one, two, and three pounds of tomatoes. Well, halfway between zero and four would be two ounces. And halfway between zero and two would be one. And halfway between two and four would be three. And I'll do matching tick marks below here. Well... From 4 down to 1, I can divide by 4. Well, I can do the same thing then for 14 down to whatever this is. And so if I take 14 and divide it by 4, I get $3.50 for 1 pound of tomatoes. And then from there, you have a couple different options. I mean, you could take 4 and divide it by 2 here to get 2. And so then 14 divided by 2 could get you 7. Or you could take that 350 and multiply by 2 to get 7. A couple different options. But I definitely think once you have the 350 for 3 pounds, you could take the 1, multiply by 3 to get 3. And so 350, $3.50, times that $3 is $10.50 for the three pounds of tomatoes. Now, four movie tickets cost $48. At this rate, what is the cost of five movie tickets and 11 movie tickets? Well, let's start off with the fact that $48 is equal to four movie tickets. Well, if I were to simplify this, how much for one ticket? Well, four divided by four gets me to that one ticket. So if I take 48 and divide it by four, that gets me $12 for the one ticket. And once I know that it's $12 for one ticket, I can take that $12 for one ticket and multiply by five to get $60. And I can take that $12 for one ticket and multiply by 11 to get $132. So the key here in order to multiply is to figure out, well, how much for one ticket, the title of our lesson, and then use that how much for one idea and multiply. Let's continue on. Question four. Priya bought these items at the grocery store. Find each unit price. 12 eggs for $3 cost per egg. Well, $3 for 12 eggs we want to know how much one egg costs. 
And so attention to detail here matters. We're dividing this by 12. So if you're getting an answer of 4 here, you're doing 12 divided by 3, not 3 divided by 12, which is what we need to do in order to get a solution of 25 cents per egg. 3 pounds of peanuts cost $7.50. Cost per pound. So $7.50 and 50 cents over our three pounds. Once again, we need to figure out how much one pound costs. Well, we're taking three and dividing it by three to get to one pound. And so $7.50 divided by three here will give us the solution, which is $2.50. 50 cents for one pound of peanuts. Four rolls of toilet paper cost $2. How much is the cost per roll? Well, $2 for the four rolls. How much is the cost per one roll? Again, this is four divided by four to get to the one roll. And so it's going to be 2 divided by 4 to get the 50 cents per roll. And again, if you're doing 4 divided by 2 just because you're seeing big number divided by small number, you're not thinking through the question. You need to think through this and go, all right, 2 rolls, four do or, sorry, $2, 4 rolls. Oh, no, how much one roll cost? Well, if I divide this by 4, because 4 rolls divided by 4 gets me the 1 roll, so $2 divided by 4 is going to get me the 50 cents. And lastly, in this question, 10 apples for $3.50. How much is the cost per apple? So our cost of $3.50 for 10 apples. What is my cost per one apple? Well, once again, dividing by 10 here. And so if I take my $3.50 50 cents and divided by 10, it's 35 cents per apple. Continuing on. Question five. Claire made a smoothie with one cup of yogurt, three tablespoons of peanut butter, two teaspoons of chocolate syrup, and two cups of ice. Kieran tried to double this recipe. He used two cups of yogurt, six tablespoons of peanut butter, five tablespoons of chocolate syrup, and four cups of crushed ice. He didn't think it tasted right. Describe how the flavor of Kieran's recipe compares to Claire's. Well, if we look at the yogurt, in Claire's it was one. In Kieran's it was two. So this was a double, so we're good with that one. If we look at the peanut butter. Claire had it at three tablespoons. Kieran had it at six tablespoons. Still multiplying by two, so we're okay there. What about the chocolate syrup? Claire had it at two teaspoons. Kieran had it at five. Well, this is actually going to be then multiplying it by two and a half. So there's our uh, difference. Let's just double check the ice though. Make sure it didn't get watered down or something. For the ice, Claire had two cups. Kieran had four cups. So still multiplied by two to double that. So where was our difference here? It was in this chocolate syrup where if she were, or he were, excuse me, to double this, we would be sitting at four teaspoons of chocolate syrup. And so he used more chocolate syrup than what the recipe called for to double it. So describe how the flavor of Karen's recipe compares to Claire's, more chocolatey. Which I guess is never a bad thing, right? <laughs> 
How should Kieran change the quantities that he used so that his smoothie tastes just like Claire's? Well, we already did that there. Uh, should change chocolate syrup. to four teaspoons. All right, question six. A drama club is building a wooden stage in the shape of a trapezoidal prism. The height of the stage is two feet. Some measurements are shown here for the stage. What is the area of all faces of the stage excluding the bottom? Show your reasoning. If you get stuck, consider drawing a net of the prism. Yikes. Well, let us first find this top piece here. Now, luckily, this top piece is the same as this piece here. And so let's work on finding that first. The area of this middle rectangle looks to be 12 times 10, which would be 120 square feet. These triangles look like they meet at the right angle here, have a base of 5 and a height of 12. And so if area is equal to 1 half base times height, or we've also done base times height divided by 2, Either way, when you solve for this, you'd get 1 half times 5 times 12, which is 30. So each of these, again, 5 times 12 divided by 2, would still get you 30 square feet. So as we look at this trapezoid, we're looking at 120 plus the 30 plus the 30, which is 60, to get us 180 square feet for that trapezoid. Now, we need to look at some of these other sides. What about this rectangle here that I'm outlining in blue? Well, the height of these were all two all the way around, so 13 times 2 is going to be 26. In fact, looking back here, I see another 13 by 2. So this is also going to be 26. Then I have this shape in the front here, this rectangle in front, that looks to be 20 by 2. So 20 times 2 is going to be 40 square feet. And then lastly, I have this rectangle in the back that looks to be 10 times 2 for the rectangle to be 20. And we're not doing the bottom of the stage. And so, if we look to add all these up, the trapezoid itself was 180. And then adding up all of these little rectangles around, the green 40, the two blue 26s, and the 20. Add all these up, 180 plus the 40, plus the 26s, plus the 20, gets us a surface area, if you will, of 292 square feet for this trapezoidal prism. And that is it for this lesson, Grade 6, Unit 2, Lesson 8, on how much for one. Good luck.